Okay, welcome to the bookmap webinar. Uh, we'll go through the order flow uh, in the live markets here. Risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, more information, go to bookmap.com, become a member there, and uh, there's lots of free resources, and uh, you can reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. So um, let me... Uh, show you where you can find bookmap uh, if you want to give it a try just go to bookmap.com uh, so it's friday uh, the link for the webinar uh, i will have a new one here in a few uh, uh, about 15 minutes after the webinar finishes today so if you want to sign up for all of next week's you just need to sign up once here and uh, you're good to go uh, let's see here let's go down to <clears throat> some of the pricing information uh, if you guys are uh, want to give bookmap a try uh, see what it looks like, how it works for you. Uh, you can. There's a 14-day trial period for all of the products here, uh, and um, the uh, there's just uh, basically there's uh, two products uh, here. Uh, there's the Bookmap Basic and the Bookmap Advanced, and you can see the pricing and the billing. The um, difference between the two, the Advanced is uh, it, it includes all of these add-on features. Okay, so uh, we can go through some of these. If you guys have questions about them, let me know. Uh, and the ability to trade from the chart. Okay, with the bookmap basic, you do not get that. Uh, and then these are other package deals here with a data feed, okay, with DX feed. This allows you to uh, um, access U.S. equities. So you can still access U.S. equities uh, with the basic or advanced here. You can just add the DX feed uh, afterwards. Uh, we're just offering it as a, as a package here, so it's up to you. Um, and um, uh, if you um, access a lot of the futures data, uh, then uh, I would go with the uh, basic or advanced and then add DX feed uh, if you want to access the, um, uh, the equities. And the way you do that is you will, you will log into Bookmap and then you will um, uh, upgrade here. All right, so it's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty simple process. Uh, and um, that's the uh, the different versions, all right? Uh, then um, let me show you here under Education tab uh, where all the uh, videos are here, okay? So video snippets, uh, you can watch them here. You can click on the playlist. It takes you to our YouTube channel uh, and uh, go through these videos <clears throat> that are uh, very concise and go through the order flow of what, um, uh, you know, or a phenomena that Bookmap is displaying. Okay, and then you can review the recorded webinars here uh, with this link. Okay, that'll take you to our YouTube page as well, uh, and you can see all the webinars here. And uh, here is yesterday's, for example. All right, subscribe to our um, YouTube channel, uh, as well as uh, follow us on Twitter, and you'll get the most up-to-date information here in, uh, in Twitter. Okay, all right. Well, let's see. Um, just uh, end of the week here, but uh, you know there was some uh, in interesting stuff in uh, the news for uh, Amazon and Whole Foods with a buyout. Uh, so uh, uh, both stocks are up. Uh, let's see. Uh, is that that's not the right symbol for Amazon? Is it? No. Uh, There we go. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, we can take a look at that if you want to see um, what what that looks like. I mean, we, we you know obviously stocks are different. We we have a, a really big gap here, as you can see, on the daily chart. Uh, but uh, we, we'll take a look maybe, and uh, I'm just curious myself uh, what that might look like. All right. Uh, other than that, uh, the audio is breaking up. Hmm. I'm not sure what to tell you. Uh, other people uh, having issue with uh, audio? No? Okay. Yeah, Craig, I don't know what the, what the problem is then. Uh, you might want to log out and then try to log back in. Okay, well, anyway, let's, uh, let's go through the process here and look at some live order flow. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to first look at the macro view uh, in, uh, in a market uh, and then the microstructure in book map. Uh, and uh, then we're going to look uh, very uh, closely at the order flow. OK, 
Okay. So we're integrating uh, and drilling down from higher time frame to more microstructure, uh, mid time frame, and then um, you know the uh, low time frame here with the order flow. All right. And this will allow you to pinpoint your entries and exits, and uh, and also your trade management. And then we'll get into the next slide here, which is the auction process. Okay, but uh, let me uh, we'll just back up here, and we'll first take a look at some of the higher time frames, uh, and then uh, look at uh, that um, uh, that auction, okay, or microstructure. All right, S and P has been going back and forth. Uh, take a look at that market. Uh, I mean, we are coming down into some interesting areas here, and we're starting to see some tails on the uh, or some pins on the uh, half-hour chart here. So let's let's take a look at the S and P. Uh, we'll start off and look at the much higher time frame and the daily. You can see that we've been going sideways here for several days uh, at all-time high uh, areas, uh, and uh, we are in a range though. Uh, and let me zoom in a little bit more, and you can see the breakout from the previous range. And you can see this area here at 2,400, the figure, uh, and, and several days of acceptance and buying uh, up in that area. Now we're starting to see sellers come back in, okay, the last three days. Okay, so that's the daily chart. Uh, we're coming down toward that 2,400 figure. And uh, here's the half-hour chart. And zoom out a little bit and get a feel for what's going on. Okay. Yesterday we saw this uh, move up into our, I think it was around 27, 24, 27. And uh, we started to, it wasn't, um, you know, particularly strong, but we did start to see uh, a, a little bit of a rollover in the order flow. Uh, and we did see some follow through as, as we uh, uh, ended the webinar. Uh, we went through the replay mode, but we, we did see that uh, uh, you know the um, the order flow did kind of shift over and it, and it went back down and it tested where it tested down here okay where it broke from right in this area here it broke to the downside here and then the, on the upside we, we can see this is where it broke from again and this is exactly where we came down and tested and then you know be really curious to see what that or, order flow looked like here I can imagine it uh, but um, and we saw follow through to the upside for the rest of the day. Buenos dias, Francisco. Um, okay, so uh, uh, where did we go? We went right back up into this cluster here, uh, or uh, uh, you know, a, a traded volume, and, and you can see uh, we went sideways, and you can see the sell-off here. Okay, so we're right back down into this zone again. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm actually, uh, you can see here, we can even kind of uh, outline this little zone here. Uh, and we already had a line there from previously, or maybe I didn't. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is where I'm, I'm looking and it, and it coincides very nicely with this uh, uh, break here uh, uh, to the downside. All right, so keep an eye, I want to keep an eye on that area at 21. Uh, and then also this area here around 18. And then, you know, we can even take these, uh, uh, take this line and go a little bit lower here into the swings from uh, yesterday's low, okay, around uh, around 24.16 and, and a quarter. All right, let's take a quick look at a five-minute chart. Just uh, trying to get a, an idea of what's going on uh, in the uh, in the order flow. And, uh, yeah, we just continue to, to move down. So, um uh, but like like we said though, uh, we can see some buying starting to come in here. Okay, so I imagine we're there, we're going to probably see some uh, absorption here uh, in uh, in Bookmap. Uh, let's take a look. Okay. Yeah, I mean uh, you can see here uh, we're still in a downtrend environment, uh, and. Uh, uh, the the structure here, the microstructure, uh, you can see the break at 9:30 and a quick move to the downside, and then we can start to outline our microstructure a little bit more. And again, I I should probably just say structure instead of microstructure, uh, but um, uh, anyway, uh, you know, looking at something like this uh, on a trend line, and uh, and then we're also looking at uh, on the horizontal. Uh, little areas where we broke from, uh, and uh, and we came back and retested, and you can see that here, uh, for example. Okay, 
uh, we broke out of that area here, okay? Um, in fact, kind of works both ways here. It's not the cleanest, uh, but we can see it. Uh, there's a cluster here that traded, and I can bring this up, all right, to right around here. Uh, and you can see the swing back to where we broke from here, move back down, okay, move back up, time and acceptance up into this area here. Uh, but then, uh, and then we break from that yet again, we come back and retest again. Okay. So you see that this, uh, this kind of structure and this kind of sweeping of the book is very powerful. Uh, and Bookmap shows it really, really well. All right. So, uh, in fact, I'm going to uh, I'm going to take a moment and uh, uh, show you what I mean by sweeping of the book. This is getting into the mechanics uh, of uh, of order flow uh, and um, uh, just market mechanics in general, right? And understanding this uh, is important, uh, and you can see it on all time frames. We're seeing it in this these structures here. You can see it on the daily. You can see it on the monthly. It it really doesn't matter, right? Uh, and the definition is going to be a little different for those uh, other um, higher time frames, but uh, uh, the concept is the same, right? So in the GoToWebinar handouts folder, you'll see there, there's uh, this document called the Bookmap HFT Intro Guide, okay? It's a PDF uh, file, and I'm going to uh, come down here, and we're going to cover sweeping of the book, right? So this that's the wrong one. This is the one. We just have it a few times in here. Okay. All right, so this concept, uh, sweeping prices lower, breaking below levels. This is usually how we break below levels is the um, you don't get just a, sw a sweep of one price level. You get several price levels. Right, and uh, usually uh, you'll break out of a uh, trading range uh, with a pretty aggressive sweep. All right, and it could be a stop run, uh, or it could be someone just being very aggressive, or it could be both. Right. Uh, so here's the concept, and I'm just going to show you one price level. Okay, and then I'll show you in Bookmap how it looks in several price levels. So here's our auction. You know, best offer, best bid. Uh, you can see the price here. And you can see that there's 60 contracts here on the best bid, 20, 30, 60. Someone comes in with a market sell order and hits the bid with a 100 lot. Okay, so what happens? Okay, well, they sweep this entire price level. They take these 60 contracts. Okay, and they sweep that level and they take 40 contracts, the remaining 40 contracts, from the uh, uh, price level lower here. Okay. So their average position here is going to be 60 on uh, uh, this uh, 20.62.75, and then 40 on uh, 20.62.50. All right, that's what happens when these guys hit the market uh, uh, sell button with large size. They've actually moved price against them a little bit. Uh, their average price is uh, lower uh, down into the you know dip, drips or dips down into this uh, 62.50, somewhere in between here. Uh, that will be their average pricing. Uh, and that is why most of the time you'll see larger players using limit orders because they don't want to move price against them. Uh, and uh, they'll use iceberg orders because they don't want to move price against them, but they also can hide their high liquidity with their limit orders or their hidden orders. All right, so anyway, uh, Let's go through this, uh, the mechanics here. Um, now, the rest of the remaining orders here in the book, these, the rest of these 40 contracts, what happens to them? Well, they jump to the front of the line. And then what happens behind price? Well, there's a vacuum. Uh, the bid offer, uh, will uh, the spread will widen by one tick. Okay? And unless these guys immediately uh, start offering uh, one tick lower. Okay. So that's how you get these um, the, the widening of a spread like that as well, uh, and uh, and you get this whole price level here at 2062.75 has been swept, All right? Uh, and then um, uh, yeah, now now we, the bid is at uh, at 62.50, and then at 63 is the offer. All right, 
uh, columns. Yeah, we, we can go over the columns today, Francisco. That's a that's a good idea. Uh, and uh, so that's a sweeping of one just one price level. Let's take a look here at several price levels. What happens? What does that look like? Okay, uh, it looks like this here. Uh, it looks like this here, uh, and uh, this here. All right. Now there's some buying in here as well but the majority of it is selling. That's why this drives lower, okay? This is probably the best example uh, because you can see that there, there's uh, you know, a lot more selling and uh, a little bit of buying in here as well, all right? And you can see we came back and tested right where we broke from yet again, right here in this area, okay? All right, so uh, let's take a look here uh, and um, so that's, that's that concept, um, breaking from that level, testing back to where we, we, we were, uh, and, we, and we saw it, it with just this, hor this one horizontal line several times. You know, here's where it stopped. Uh, we came back up. We broke through it here a little bit higher, more like uh, three ticks or four ticks higher here. Okay? But then we came back and retested here, broke again here to the upside. So it's banging around back and forth. Uh, and then it broke again here. Okay. came back and retested and now we're right at that level again now this is an interesting little area uh, right at the moment uh, because we do have some volume uh, trading uh, above these little swings here okay a tick lower at 22.75 and um, uh, but we have the uh, the trend line intact right here uh, as well as uh, the uh, this horizontal line uh, that we've uh, been banging around back and forth so uh, you know, there, there's potential here if we get a nice cluster of volume trading up above that the next swing would be this 25 area here to test. All right. Okay, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute here with the, uh, uh, the auction process and the order flow. Okay, because some interesting things are starting to uh, uh, materialize right now uh, or last several minutes, I, I would say. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, the, uh, we, we're looking at this microstructure and we're understanding this microstructure with that concept of sweeping of the book, okay, uh, on a higher time frame, okay, not just one price level. All right, and that, that's what I wanted to get across, right, because you're going to see it again and again, uh, and it's just how the market breaks. Uh, most of the time it's how the market breaks from one, out of one range into the next. Okay. Um, so that's our microstructure, uh, and uh, now let's go to the auction. Okay. All right. So we're showing up to the market. Uh, we're, we want to um, uh, take part in the auction. We want to know first where the majority of the participants are in this auction. We want to understand the configuration of the limit order book. That's how we read it uh, digitally. Uh, and then we want to understand how these participants behave when price approaches them. Okay. And uh, we, we we can read this behavior, and uh, we can it's it's not just uh, one um, a behavioral uh, aspect we're going to look at. We're going to look at many, and that's going to give us a really good picture. Uh, usually does uh, to what's going on at that area. Okay, uh, not just uh, you know one price level, but several price levels in in various times as well. Right. That'll give us a really good understanding of how this auction is behaving and the intent of these traders uh, in the auction. Right. And then we're going to read where they're, uh, they're taking their positions. Really, where is the market transacting? Okay. And, uh, and that is tr traditional t tape reading. Uh, and uh, we'll take a look at that. And then now we'll have a, a holistic view here of what's going on uh, in the order flow. Okay. Very objective. All right, it's not, uh, uh, this process is uh, uh, pretty uh, 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 straightforward and, and, and objective, all right? Okay, so we're almost up to 25 here, all right? This is what we were looking for. Um, I, I think we'll probably get a, you know, a little retest right now back to where we broke from, uh, probably right into here around this uh, 20, uh, three and a quarter or 23 and a half, something like that. Uh, and then maybe we'll get one more extension up here into 25. All right. So anyway, let's go through this auction process. Okay. So let me zoom in a little bit. And the first, the first question was, what is the current configuration of the book? 
right? Where are the majority of the participants? Okay, and let me adjust the heat map a little bit and we can see. We noticed them earlier, they're here at 25 on the offer. That's where they want to sell, right above this little swing here. Okay, where are they on the bid? Where do they want to buy with high liquidity? They're down here. They're down here at 21. Okay, and you can see it here in the limit order book uh, in book map. Right, let me, let me, I'm sorry, let me widen these out just a little bit. Okay, in our, our limit order book, you can see it here. This is the best bid and offer here. Right, and it's here as well. Uh, and then these numeric values here uh, are, are uh, given a graphical uh, value uh, in the uh, the heat map. So white, whiter or, or lighter areas are higher liquidity. Highest in the book right now uh, in this view is here, 1,300 contracts. Okay, and you know that immediately. You don't have to, you know, uh, uh, read the numbers. Uh, you, you already under, have a good understanding of this auction already by a glance. All right, so that's the current configuration of the book. Now let's answer the second question. Uh, how do they behave uh, when price approaches them? Okay. And um, we can answer that now too. Okay. This is uh, shaping up pretty nicely for us. Okay. So look, look how they behaved here on the bid. Now we're, we're in a downtrend, right? But these guys wanted to buy pretty aggressively here. Right. In fact, we we know that uh, there were almost 1,400 contracts. Yeah, there were 1,400 contracts here uh, at this price level, which is higher than the swing low. That's 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 aggressive. That's bullish. They want to be buyers at a higher area. All right. Now, how did they behave when price approached them at the last second? They they, they pulled. Okay. And uh, we can read that exactly. I can click on the hand tool and zoom in here, and we can see that. A okay. little bit of volume traded down here. Okay, now the majority of that liquidity pulled. Now it moved away, and, and it, this is where it tested them at 21. Okay, they pulled, and then uh, and then price moved up a tick, uh, and then a tick or two, and then they jumped back right back in though. Okay, so um, uh, you know they 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 want to be buyers at a higher area, but they're not um, uh, completely sure here, uh, and uh, it's. Uh, not good to see them pull at that last second, but they're still uh, placing their orders here, okay? If they pulled completely and did not come back into the book, uh, then that would show they had no intent at all to trade, basically. All right, so we're getting our pullback here. This is exactly what we were looking for, right? To this 23 and a quarter, 23 and a half area. Uh, and uh, now let's see if the, uh, uh, the bulls are still in charge here. Uh, we've got, you know, technically in our microstructure, we've got two different things to lean on. We have our trend line. Uh, we have this horizontal line where we broke from. So uh, this would be for anyone who's bullish. Uh, this would be your your low volume uh, pullback into where we broke from, and uh, and then look for that extension here. Okay. We need to trade above uh, this. Um, uh, we're already trading above this microstructure here, as you can see with our line. Right. We need to trade now above and accept above uh, 24 and three quarters or 25. Okay, and that's uh, we need to test it first. Uh, and uh, I think the bulls will give it a, a, a test at least uh, up into that area and see if they're really are sellers or or not. All right. So that's the behavior down here on the bid. Uh, what about on the offer? Okay. Well, they're they're um, they're getting aggressive now too. Uh, you can see as price is coming up to them, they start to add into the book. So they want to, it looks like they want to sell here. All right now, it's not the highest liquidity, but it is higher than the other areas around it. All right. So uh, we still need to test right into them or, or one tick away and see really what, what they mean. You know, do they, do they want to get filled at these areas or not? Uh, we're, we're gauging their intent, uh, their intent to trade. All right. All right, so uh, so the other areas around it, uh, that uh, is what I um, uh, described earlier. We want to understand that will give us a, a, a much better picture of the context of this auction. So we see there's two different price levels here uh, where they're providing higher liquidity. Okay, and uh, here, I mean, you can see down on the bid, you know, they're, they're, these guys didn't even get tested here at 20. 
uh, and then they raised it one point higher to 21, uh, and then yet again here, right? So, and th these are several price levels. So we're, we're, we're starting to get a feel for the buyers in general, right? So now we have a lot of information here, uh, good information and good insight, okay? Uh, looking for this uh, a potential reversal, okay? Uh, just by the auction itself. Okay. Now we haven't gone over the transactions yet. Okay, that's the third piece. Okay, the tape. Uh, really, where are the transactions taking place? And this is an important part of it. Okay, and uh, let's zoom out a little bit and get a feel for it. All right. Well, I mean, we see a lot of transactions take place up here. Okay, compared to these other areas. All right. Well, this this bodes well. Right. Uh, we're, we're not seeing a lot of selling take place here yet. It could change. Uh, but um, uh, for the moment, uh, you know, I, I'm seeing uh, a lack of selling on these two little points here down to the area where we're looking for that pullback. Okay. And we had volume trade up here. And a lot of buying uh, traded up here. There was a lot of aggressive buying. And there's some selling in these areas too. But uh, I think there's enough buying here to justify a test of this 25 area. All right, so what, we, what we're looking for here, uh, I mean, we have our volume profiles, and uh, Francisco, I'll go over the, um, uh, yeah, the cumulative delta, I'm not gonna go over that today. Uh, I'm gonna go over your columns. Uh, I, I've been promising you to do that for you, so uh, we'll, we'll look into that. Uh, and uh, I'm, start, I'm gonna start to bring it in right now, uh, looking at our, our volume columns. Okay, understanding uh, the, um, uh, volume here uh, in the uh, uh, the profiles, okay, uh, and um, the CVP volume profile is of what's viewable in my range. It gives the chart range volume profile, and the SVP gives the um, uh, volume profile since when I opened up Bookmap. Okay, so if I zoom in here, okay, now you can see the CVP reflects that, okay, of this this uh, data here. Okay, SVP uh, instead is uh, still showing all of the volume uh, collected uh, or data collected during the uh, entire session here. All right. Okay. All right. Well, we're back up uh, to our 24 and a quarter, 24 and a half area. Haven't gotten to 25 yet, uh, but um, uh, we did uh, we did see a point move out of that uh, at least. And uh, let's see, uh, looking for those buyers to show up again. Okay. And we go through this process and you gauge uh, the understanding uh, of this auction uh, or the, con the context of this auction uh, and the intent of these traders. Okay. And we know there's transactions that took place up here. So this is, this is a really good sign. Okay. We saw them bidding it up here. That's a good sign. Uh, this is not the best sign is to see these guys here at 24, uh, 25. Okay. And they, they, it looks like they want to sell, but we're, we're going to test right into them now, I believe. Um, you know, who knows? S&P always rotates one more time. Uh, but um, uh, the... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, possible, um, sit, uh, let, me, let me try to cover this quickly because it's starting to move right now. Um, okay, so now we want to look, look at uh, these guys pulling here and we want to see if they're going to throw uh, some, um, some bids at these higher levels here. Do they, if they uh, maybe want to support this breakout area, we have, you know, on our microstructure, we have two different areas here. Uh, technically, we have our trend line as well as our horizontal line and our sweeps of the of this area and back and forth. Uh, now, do they want to be buyers? Uh, if they do, they're going to start to show pretty high liquidity down here. This will be the deal for them, looking for the pullback into these areas, right? Uh, and um, uh, the um, uh, that that'll skew the auction. Okay, the auction will be a little different then. Okay, that, because you can see that behavior had, does not exist. Uh, the highest liquidity was, was here at uh, uh, 21 and a half, uh, and then you can see it at 21, okay? 
We want to see them uh, start to uh, get very aggressive with their limit orders, uh, skew the auction, uh, and we want to see those aggressive buyers jump in here. Okay. That hasn't happened yet. All right. Okay, we'll we'll see a skew here. I'm I'm uh, you know high probability uh, that we'll see some sort of skew. These guys may may just pull. Uh, that that will be another skew in the auction though if they pull that high liquidity. And and here they are. They're starting to right as price is coming into it. Okay, let's zoom in a little closer. Okay. And when, when now we're starting to gauge the intent of these traders here on this uh, uh, on this offer, okay? As price came up, look at, look at how they pulled at the last second here. Okay, price moves away, they jump back in. Price comes back up, they pull again. And this is showing that kind of behavior. They're not really that interested. Okay, if they were really interested, they would not only be uh, keeping their orders here; they would be being uh, they would be aggressive with it. All right, there's our, there it is. Okay, there now we got our test through 25 and see that skew in that auction, okay? We started, we were looking for this kind of behavior, right? But uh, then they pulled very quickly, right? So we traded through into, uh, and these guys did pull last second, as you can see, okay? We have tra uh, transactions taking place here, uh, but um, uh, the, uh, uh, these guys pulled here on the uh, on the bid as well, right? Uh, we want to see what would be very bullish to see here is a flip of the book. These guys that were here on the offer, we want to see them flip over now to the bid side. Okay. All right. So, uh, any questions uh, on this? Is there any questions on this process, uh, reading the order flow? And, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to make it really a, objective uh, for you. Uh, but you, you can see that, um, uh, you know, starting to understand this auction and starting to understand the transactions within our higher time frames, uh, you know, really gives us a nice, nice insight. Okay. Um, our higher time frames and our, and our microstructures. Okay. I mean, what the webinar started here at 11, uh, and we were uh, starting to um, uh, look for uh, that kind of behavior. Uh, I think it was right around here, um, you know, down at 23. Uh, so, uh, it was, you know, it's just a couple point move. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we noted the behavior here, okay? We noted all the transactions taking place up here. Uh, and, uh, and now we're seeing a little bit of follow through too, okay? Next swing here. Uh, is the next stop, okay? So and the, and look, look at how they're providing the high liquidity up there already. Okay, they're already they're already jumping in. Okay. All right, let's zoom in here a little bit. Now now let's look for maybe a pullback to where, okay, where we broke from. Maybe we'll get a flip of that book now. Um, and um, let's read the, the strength, okay? Put this into context. This is what um, uh, is so important, uh, is understanding this kind of uh, uh, phenomena and market mechanics in context. How strong was this breakout, right? It was a point, point and a half. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, that, that's not the, not the strongest. It's not bad. Uh, but uh, if it was just a few ticks, well, it has the potential to reject and quickly trade back through and then maybe down to 20. All right. Uh, and, um, but this is showing a little bit of strength in, in my mind. And why do I say that? Well, because the move was pretty, pretty decent. I mean, it wasn't bad, right? Not the strongest, but it's not bad. And the um, a volume is starting to trade up here. Okay. Uh, and then both of those are good. So we got a we get a pullback here, okay, and where does it pull back to? Well, there, we covered this the other day, especially on on more aggressive uh, trades uh, or breakouts. I'm sorry, on more aggressive breakouts, we will see this. Uh, this isn't a, an aggressive breakout, but I can still uh, demo this here for you. 
Okay, this is where a cluster of volume traded. This is where we broke from here, right? Uh, but uh, this is where a cluster of volume traded. Okay, obviously you can see the low volume nodes right here, right? Uh, but um, uh, on aggressive breakout, uh, you will probably not get, because there's still more buyers very, very interested, you will not get a test to where you broke from. You'll get a test back to that uh, previous high volume node. And that would be here at 25. Okay, and then the buyers will jump back in, and and, and price will continue. Okay, now on less aggressive um, breakouts like this, uh, you will see it come back to where it broke from, and maybe a little bit further. Okay, maybe like a a, a point of control for this range, and actually uh, not bad uh, book map. We have a, a VWAP here, uh, and then a you know in the in the profile you can see the point of control is going to be here at 24. Right, and look at there's here. Here are some guys lining up to buy at 24. Okay, with pretty high liquidity. Okay, um, but Judy, these uh, uh, yellow or or orange uh, lines, yeah. Um, click on the uh, pen tool, the drawing tool here. Okay, and then you want to click on edit. Right, and then click on the tool, and you can either hit delete or you can right click on it and you can edit it or remove it, okay? So you're, you can see that there's a highlight around the, the chart right now. So what you need to do, and, th and this is highlighted too, the tool is, so we're in drawing mode. You need to come back and go to none, uh, and then you'll be back to where you were, okay? All right. All right, guys. Um, Let's see, Francisco, let's go over these columns I've been promising. Um, and uh, <laughs> finally finally getting to it here. All right, so um, the um, uh, what are your questions about the, the columns uh, exactly? Um, you know, there's all sorts of data uh, that we have here uh, in our columns. And, and why do we offer so many different types of data? Right? It's because we come from this high frequency environment, uh, and uh, let me let me cover some of that. Right, so uh, the COB column that you see here, well, there's two of them. I just have formatted these differently. Okay, if I right click in here, uh, you choose format, uh, and then uh, you have all options here to format it however you like. Just play around with it uh, to uh, uh, whatever it is you want to see. Okay. Okay, uh, and um, so I formatted this one numerically, and then I have the this one formatted here graphically, so I can I can understand the skew in the auction uh, a lot easier. I prefer it, uh, whatever you guys like. Okay, all right. So let me right click in here now. The, these are our, our volume columns. Okay, but I'm going to right click here, and uh, you can see here that um, uh, you can format the column here. Uh, and then there's session, there's other options here for this data type. Uh, I can look at the session or the chart range, and I covered that earlier. Uh, you have uh, options to reset uh, as well. And I, I, can, I can go over any questions you have on that, but let's get to these other data types, okay? Uh, so current order book is a COB, which we already showed, okay? Volume is this one here, which is a CVP or SVP. CVP is chart range. Uh, SVP is session accumulated, right? Now let's go over trades counter, okay? The trades counter uh, profile here, and you can see now it says CTC. Now if I right click here, you can see that the formatting is all the same. Uh, and you can also see that the um, there's a chart range and a session range and the same options here for resetting. It's just a different data type. What we're looking at now are the number of events, trade events that took place. All right, so uh, what's, uh, this is numeric and um, uh, graphical. You can see that, um, uh, you know, thir this 3519 right here represents um, uh, uh, 3,519 uh, trade events took place. Okay, it's not, it's not volume, it's the, the number of orders uh, that, that traded. Okay. A lot of traders like to see this, 
uh, because they're not looking for volume, they're looking for events. And why is that? Uh, it's because in the high frequency environment, a lot of these trades uh, don't come in and with one order with uh, lots of contracts. Uh, they'll disguise that position. Uh, they'll, they'll use, uh, let, let's go over an example. A uh, larger trader would come in with, usually with a block order uh, with one, um, one order for 100 contracts. Okay. What they'll do now in the algorithmic environment uh, is they will come in with uh, 100 uh, different um, uh, trades for one contract each. And that will disguise their position. So what the algos start to read is the potential to trade at an area based, based on not the volume that traded, but on the events that took place. Uh, and uh, that's why we offer this, uh, this uh, data type. Okay. It's, uh, it's funny. It's usually somewhere around a third or so, or, you know, I mean, I, I just say that off, off the cuff here. Uh, but uh, the profile is almost identical uh, to the volume profile. Uh, and um, I can demo that for you here. Let me show you. Okay. So here's a, here's a volume profile column, and here's a, a trade counter profile. Okay. It's almost identical. A uh, little more volume traded down here, as you can see, uh, than events. It's, it's curious. Uh, and um, I usually see it's about a third of it, and it usually holds true. I mean, 2,500, 8,000, 3,500, 12,000, 3,700, 13, somewhere around there. Uh, anyway, let me show you what that looks like uh, in, in the chart. Okay, why do they break up these orders? You won't see, uh, you know, this one large dot take place. Instead, uh, you're going to see this. This is what I'm talking about. We're down at nanosecond levels, and there's look at look at how and this is a, this isn't a bad example at all. Look at how this algo uh, operated. Okay, it aggressively. Uh, hit the um, or lifted the offer here, uh, and uh, these are a little off key here. But look at the um, uh, these these orders that took place in three very quickly, and uh, and then a little bit of space, and then three very quickly again and again, and then uh, one uh, very quickly, um, but um, uh, one after another. The spacing on this uh, is got to be a machine, okay. Actually, this one looks like it was the same one. It just maybe got filled a little bit later, and that's all. Okay, so this is what we're trading against, right? Uh, and uh, you know, sophisticated trader using uh, using an algo. Okay, and that's why we have these different data types in the columns. Okay, so Francisco, if I'm not answering your question, let me know. All right. Uh, but uh, I want to I want to demo that because I want to let you guys know why we have so many different data types, okay, and why it can be important. Okay, so that's the CTC, the trades counter. Now let's right click here, and you can see these are all the data types, you know, from notes, you know, time and sales, on up to the current order book. Okay, the quotes counter. Okay, what I'm showing now, the CQC, uh, is the amount of orders refreshed at these levels, okay? So, you know, this is adding and pulling of liquidity uh, and um, refreshing, messaging, going back and forth. Uh, think of this like pit noise. Uh, back in the days in the, in, the, in the pits, think of it like um, the, there's all sorts of uh, uh, racket going on, lots of uh, uh, yelling back and forth in the pit, but it's not required that one uh, trade even take place. Uh, one uh, one trade event take place. Uh, they could be just uh, you know shouting back and forth. They want it for this price. I'll take it for that, or you know I won't, or whatever. Uh, what we're um, seeing here is is similar to that pit noise. Okay, it's that auctioning going on. And why is that important? Because it shows interest at price levels, and the algos read this information. Okay, uh, just like a pit trader used to. 
Okay, so uh, that's the, uh, the it, it really shows uh, some very nice profiles as well. Uh, and uh, you can see the nice, really nice tapers in some of these. Um, but uh, that's because it's showing all data. It's showing, you know, if, if something changes way down here and we just saw one uh, flicker, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show, you know, here in the profile. It's going to add more data to it. And that, that's why you get these nice tapers. Okay. All right. So that's the CQC. Okay. Uh, let's see. The quotes delta. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go over this. Uh, what I'm showing here. Uh, any questions on these? All right. Let's zoom in again. Okay. Quotes delta. This uh, plus minus column here. What this is showing. Uh, is the amount of liquidity from that limit order book here, okay, the, the COB column, the amount of liquidity that was either added or pulled. If you see a negative number, we know that uh, liquidity was pulled from these areas. If you see a positive number, uh, you know liquidity was added. Okay, now this view might be different than yours. Uh, this is because I'm using rhythmic uh, and uh, they are offering something unique now with the uh, S&P E-mini, as well as with the COMEX and the NYMEX, and that is full depth, full market depth. There is no limit to it, okay? If someone uh, pulls liquidity way down here at, uh, at uh, 2420, you're going to see it reflected, all right? Uh, usually, uh, we, you know, we didn't have that. Uh, and uh, usually we it was a it was a depth set it was 10 on each side it looked something like this and this was the lit book now the entire range is lit okay so uh, if you want to limit it you can you can set the depth here all right and you can input whatever you want to see a lot of traders just want to see the uh, overall added and pulled uh, maybe in the first three levels, or you know, two or two or three or or four levels, whatever. And you want to look for that, um, you know, maybe market making activity of pulling of uh, some of these algos, uh, and uh, then they'll be um, you know jumping down to lower areas. So you can do that. All right. Okay, that is the uh, quotes column, the notes column. Uh, you can add custom notes here. Uh, you just click, and you can set uh, the, the price level. It, it remembers the price you clicked on. Uh, you can add your note, uh, and uh, you can make a template for your note. Uh, you can style it here, uh, and then you can also add a um, notification, okay, uh, an alert uh, to take place. And there you go. All right. Okay, now there's a, a new uh, column as well. Uh, the cost, the cloud notes, okay. And this allows you to set. Um, what you can do is you can have a an Excel or a comma separated value file uh, on a remote server, uh, and you can update it that file, and then Bookmap will refresh that by the intervals that you uh, choose here. Uh, you know, so if you make a change uh, on that document, uh, it will relay the data and it will make the change in Bookmap. All right, so you need to put a URL in. Okay, uh, time and sales. This is a new uh, new data column here. It's been highly requested, so we do offer it now. And this is just um, uh, the time and sales going, rolling through, okay? You can um, uh, filter it by a minimum or maximum size. You can, sh you can show all, uh, all of the buying or all the selling. Uh, and then we can also pop this out of the window and you can place this in a separate area if you want. Okay, and uh, and you can you can uh, export this uh, data as well right here. All right. Okay, and then uh, last two here: inserting and hiding a column. Okay, let's go back to our volume, our CVP, and that looks that looks just fine. And let's change this one back to session. Okay, Francisco. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, John, uh, can you show how to get the plus minus column again? Yeah. 
um, just uh, right click and quotes delta. Okay. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Brian, stage five, uh, data feed the OEC data um, from uh, uh, stage five and gain capital is good as well. Uh, the uh, the rhythmic, uh, you know, this is a nice benefit, uh, being able to see the entire depth. And you can limit the depth if you want, right? Like, for example, and why might you want to do that? Well, let's say, for example, look at the COB column. What if all of a sudden someone jumps in here at 2420 with, you know, 8,000 contracts or something, you know, what's going to happen is this is going to be the longest bar in the book. Uh, everything else is going to be in reference to it. And uh, I'm not going to be able to read the inside data that I want to see here very well. All right. So uh, then what you can do is you can, you can set the depth for that as well. Okay. So we'll set the depth and then we need to right click once more and we need to format this. Uh, and um, uh, we don't want to see the extended book, okay? And there you go. And you see, you get the aggregate here on both sides as well. Aggregate, aggregate on the uh, on the offer, and then aggregate on the bid, All right? So maybe this is a little cleaner for you. Maybe you like that, but you still get the full depth here uh, in uh, it with the rhythmic. Uh, Brian, uh, rhythmic for the ES is the only one I've seen that offers full depth. Uh, but uh, for the COMEX and for the NYMEX, uh, CQG offers it as well. Okay, and you can see the trend uh, evolving. Uh, you know, this is why, like, as time goes by, we're getting more and more transparency into these markets. Uh, and, um, you know, consumers are demanding it. Uh, they want to see it. Uh, and it's being offered. So, um, nice, nice stuff. Uh, nice, nice uh, stuff to see. All right, let's go back here and uh, look at full depth. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. I think I covered uh, all your questions. Uh, we saw some uh, pretty decent um, uh, price action here. Well, we uh, saw the the downtrend break here. We called it. Uh, we saw the extension to the upside. Our 25 was not only hit, but you can see that we swept the book higher, and now that is becoming the new line in the sand here to take a look at. Okay, right there. Okay. All right. And how is it behaving? Well, to be honest, um, I'm not seeing a lot of aggressive buying up here. Right. Uh, I want to see more more uh, transactions and more green up in these areas. Okay, auction looks pretty good on both sides. Uh, I have to say, but uh, look at this cluster here of red. You know, uh, you know, we we might we might get a, a retest back up, uh, but um, uh, so far uh, I'm seeing kind of a you know a bit of a skew in the transactions to the downside. So I'm I'm looking for uh, maybe a re, maybe to test these guys here uh, at 24. Okay. All right, guys. Well, let's call it a week. Um, and um, let's see, Brian. I'll answer your question here. Quote quote change and percentage for trading day. Not sure what you mean. Oh, for the entire day? No, I mean this is. Um, uh, I mean this is real time. Well, we won't know that until. Oh, you, you're looking for the aggregate. Um, well, yeah, I mean you can look at the SVP or the, or the you know, the. Um, uh, oh, you no, I. So you're looking for it in the uh, quotes delta. No, uh, we we don't have that. If you're looking for the quotes counter. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can just turn this into a session um, accumulated uh, a quotes counter. All right. All 
All right, we'll retest back up here uh, at 20, or, you know, 26, and um, let's see if those aggressive buyers are here. Right? If they are, then I'm looking for that extension to the upside. If they're not, I'm looking for a retest back down to 25, and then maybe we'll get um, uh, that push down, and it, maybe it kind of exhausts up here, and we'll get that push down into 24. Anyway, uh, it's kind of both sides, to be honest. Uh, I, I can't. I see a little bit of a skew to the uh, to the downside. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, aggressive buyers may, may shift, you know, really quickly here. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah, let's, let's call it a day. Have a good day, uh, a good week, uh, and um, we'll catch up with you next week.